up my phone where I need to watch the time. So <laughs> sorry about that. So Dallas, I'll start over because I know uh, you record this and <clears throat> can cut out the many mistakes that I, I tend to make. <clears throat> Welcome everybody. I'm thrilled to be with y'all again. And this is part two of a uh, focus on uh, developing and harnessing social justice. Um, oh gosh, you can see what's on my mind. I meant social capital. Um, and I just wanted to um, bring attention to this beautiful piece of writing by Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, I live in Atlanta, so um, it's extra dear to me. Uh, anything having to do with civil rights and social justice. So, um, I felt moved to include this in, in the start. Okay, that's it. We're here for part two of developing and harnessing social justice. Um, and it, it's about reaching employment goals, uh, ultimately, and I wanted to, to make sure I emphasize that. Um, but we'll move through a process where if someone is interested uh, in, in a topical area based on having a more meaningful life, a richer life, uh, when they're not working, it works there too. Um, but, you know, our goal is hoping that uh, the folks we get to work with will have a working life. And having social capital, building social capital, using social capital is the way uh, to efficiently and effectively help people become employed. So I'm going to start by just uh, reviewing a very uh, few number of slides from the first session. Um, so we know that social capital is, uh, refers to those relationships, those groups of folks that we're connected to, and it also has to be reciprocal. To have lasting social capital, you just can't take, you know, uh, being in relationships, having people who are there for you when you need them and you're there for them when they need you is critical. And we talk about that as reciprocity, giving and receiving, the actions of supporting and helping and receiving Receive. support okay. and help as needed. And I think someone may need to mute their, their speaker. Or, or whatever you say will be heard by us all. Um, Robert Putnam uh, is tied uh, in our contemporary time to the notion of social capital. He did not, not um, conceive or develop further this concept, uh, but he, it, it has roots that go back many, many years. But he's furthered it in the work that we can do, um, having to do with community building, um, having to build stronger communities, dealing with um, issues uh, that are tied to um, individuals needing to solve a particular problem. And so he writes in Better Together, by investing in social relationships, we find value in being able to do for each other. We are a social being and we can't move through life without others and others can't move through their life without us. The positive effects of social capital, which is, as we said, people in relationships, can reach goals that would be far beyond the grasp of individuals in isolation. So that tells you right there in this great work we do about helping people who happen to have a disability have inclusive lives. This points to uh, the critical nature of us starting to help people build those relationships. And often we don't focus on that for some reason. Where social capital found is found uh, in any friendship you have, networks, neighborhoods, spiritual communities, educational systems, clubs, groups, civic associations. And it also develops naturally through jobs, volunteering, uh, any entertainment uh, places that you're connected to and you've been in those environments over and over, you have to have a presence 
in spaces or through virtual connections over and over to build those relationships. You've got to be there with the people um, for that social capital to develop. Advocating and exercising however we keep our health, our physical health, along with our mental health. And there's so much research happening right now because we are in such, and I'm going to say it, a weird time. Um, we've never had um, to experience all that's going on in the way that it, it has happened globally. Um, and so a lot is happening now to try to figure out in this moment um, what the research or the data is showing. And we know that any kind of online connection, any kind of connection through a platform, a phone-based connecting, uh, they're effective and they enhance <coughs> and create opportunities to build social capital. Uh, prior to the pandemic and, and the other issues that uh, we are coping with, um, it was not uncommon for individuals in the world of business who are seeking employment to connect virtually. So know that this is very, very effective as we are doing business a little bit differently to stay safe and healthy and make sure that the folks we love who we get the support are safe and healthy. So that is the review. Now we're gonna dig in and you're gonna to have to do some work because if you signed up for this, you saw that you need to come here uh, to this gathering with an individual in mind. But I want you to first start uh, by answering these questions. Just take a minute. Um, actually, I'll give you about five minutes. Normally I give you 10, but we only have an hour, so I'm gonna uh, shorten the time for you to focus on this. So what I want you to do is a self inventory. Um, so what groups do you belong to? Are they formal groups or are they informal? And what are the groups associated with? Is it some kind of educational um, set of factors? Is it faith based? Is it from your neighborhood? Um, family, uh, business, trade, anything that is tied to us being with other people. And sometimes those connections are informal, probably family, although there are such huge families that they actually have this organizing event around um, when they get together. It's almost like a corporation. So fa some families are very uh, formal too, and they're connecting and, and continuing to enhance the social capital. I also want you to note have any of those grown more significant over time have some of the connections you have um, some of the relationships that are collective um, have those actually become less a part of your life um, have they just kind of disintegrated uh, are, are they stronger and then on a scale of one to ten uh, how full is your social capital and some of those kinds of um, practices during uh, exercises can be feel kind of hokey. <laughs> so I know a scale of one to 10, I'm not even defining it other than to say 10 means there's a richness and fullness in your life based on relationships that form into um, social capital. Um, so if you don't want to do it, no problem. So just take about five minutes.
Okay, I'm going to just call time just a couple of minutes sooner. Um, and hopefully, uh, if you haven't finished, you'll uh, complete this uh, in a um, contemplating way uh, exercise. And I see I have five chats. So let me just tap into those and see to make sure they're not something we need to pause for. Let's see. Um, oh, y'all are interacting between yourselves. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Now I want you to do the same activity or exercise or thoughtful reflection uh, with with the individuals you get to provide support to. What groups do they belong to? And I don't mean they, as they're not a part of a, the collective uh, us. I just mean um, a way to let you know to focus on the individuals who you are thinking of uh, tied to this day, this hour we're going to be together. So what groups does, does the individual you're supporting belong to? Are those groups formal or informal? And some of this you may not have answers to, but you can certainly uh, have conversations with the individual uh, after the fact. What groups are they associated with? How significant are they in their life? Um, Again, same question as y'all. Uh, have they maintained those connections? Have those connections grown? Are they, have they um, kind of faded with time? And then, then just uh, think about, based on what you know at this point, or pick back up when you're able to have more of a conversation with the individual, uh, how rich is their social capital? So I'm going to give you about three minutes on this, just because of uh, the time, and I, I want to include y'all in, in some more ways.
Okay, um, if you can unmute your mic or uh, go to the chat box, what do you notice? Look at, uh, at the two uh, quick analyses you did on your social capital and the social capital of the individual that you are thinking about uh, as we are working together today. Mine are longer, more formal, formal. my list is longer. Um, my professional net has grown more than my personal net. Oh, that's a great insight. I have more work to do to assist individuals with building more social <laughs> capital. I love that. <laughs> and your name, Fontella, that's a beautiful name. I, that's one thing I love, I get to see um, interesting names. Uh, as we work with folks like y'all. So I think, yeah, that's, that is probably going to be what most people find. Um, not always, but generally, uh, that's something uh, that we have not focused on in this work we do. And how can we do this work if we keep people in isolation or we keep people connected to disability systems where we know that's not the real world? Um, also, another person I'm in agreement with, Fontella. Excellent. All right, so let's, let's move on and I think I... Oh, okay. Another comment. I live 30 miles from where I work. Most of my social capital is in the small town I live in, not the city I work in. That is such an insightful point as well, because think about individuals who we work with at some point um, being in the same space physically is going to to happen right now uh, most of what we do is virtual but yeah you want to make sure those connections that have to do with people who live in the same area with the person uh, are a part of who we look at the beautiful piece though is we also are not defined by just an area anymore. As we work virtually, you really can contact anyone around the world who uh, might be someone you would like to talk with or, or get thoughts from because they have some expertise. So we're gonna run through the steps to build social capital. And I will, as I've said uh, repeatedly, and sorry about repeating myself so much, uh, think about the person you're supporting, who you will be doing this work with or are doing this work with. So what we're gonna do is actually go through these steps so that when you end the time that we're together today, you'll actually have a plan that you can implement that can be kind of the prototype as you work with individuals. Um, so what I want you to do based on the person that you've come here uh, to support through this process, identify skills, interests, preferences that you know are specific to that person. If you don't know, that's okay. Uh, you get to go through the fun process of spending time with the individual um, are exploring virtually with the individual to help them identify what their interests are. And at the end, I'm going to go through a process of how we incorporate this not only into our, our daily work, but our practice and uh, policy and grant writing. If you, again, if you just step away and think, oh my gosh, why are we not focusing on this as much as we do? center a uh, person centeredness so the example i'm using i'm working with um a person who has an interest in beekeeping so now i want you to know the next step is to support the individual to research where individuals who have that same interest connect and you can do that by exploring. And I want to show how easy this is. Um, as I first began working with this individual, 
I knew nothing about beekeeping, but I'm wanting to become a beekeeper <laughs> as I read about all this. So in five minutes, I found this information. I Googled and there's so much happening. And I didn't just Google here in Atlanta, although I did that as well because the person lives here, but I also Googled uh, who are the experts around the United States uh, and another topic I might say in the world. <laughs> Because imagine how powerful that is. And we'll talk about how if an interest then is so strong, it becomes a vocational theme. Imagine how important that can be to show that the person you're working with is actually connected with one of the thought leaders or one of the geniuses or one of the folks who have a name for doing this work. So what I found was there's this Beekeepers Association and they offer these educational videos. They have a beekeeping club, and a view info how to join. Um, they have a mentor to help anyone who's interested in uh, becoming a beekeeper uh, start their, I started to say flock because I have chickens, <laughs> but their beekeeping uh, network, also network. Um, and they also have members, products, and services that you can purchase. Uh, so imagine if you want to connect with someone and, and their product or service is something that you can purchase on, on the Beekeepers uh, Association, how powerful that would be to open the door. Um, you know, I, I learned about your product on uh, Beekeeping Association, and I purchased it, and I love it, and I wanted to talk to you. Uh, and there's also a glossary. Why is having a glossary as we begin to connect with individuals who um, have a similar interest or a similar th theme? Why, why would we want to know uh, the de definition of words tied to that industry? Because we want to speak their language, right? We don't want to talk with, um, oh yes, another great example uh, is there might be different meanings. Tell you are on a roll. Um, absolutely, so if they speak of one word that has maybe a more um, specific communal meaning that's not uh, tied to beekeeping, uh, then we could really be confusing as we're talking to someone. And we also wanna be respectful, we want to, learn as much as we can about an individual or a group uh, tied to an interest as we can because that shows respect. We don't want to just go in and say, hey, can you tell me anything I might need to know to, uh, to do this work? You're going to want to bring up that you've learned about this. Um, and, and when I say you, I mean you and the job seeker you're working with. Um, I've seen so many times people go in to develop a job and they have not done any research. They don't know what the business is about um, or anything. And that's a turnoff. And typically they're let out the door. So show your, uh, your passion and interest. Plus you want to know stuff. You don't want to start off without researching first um, some basic information. Uh, and another uh, person wrote to know how to ask questions. Absolutely, every industry has a culture. For example, I use this, uh, this a lot to point out, if I am working with someone who has an interest in building and, and construction in those very large overarching themes, I'm not gonna wear to a construction site what I might wear to uh, a formal uh, business that maybe is more white collar uh, because it's going to show I am sticking out like a sore thumb. That's already a turn off. Uh, so anything you do where you connect on behalf of an individual you're, you're supporting and more importantly with the individual you're supporting, learn enough about what you're going to be uh, connecting around so that you're thoughtful uh, and you know what questions to ask. If something's confusing, you can say, we researched this and we're still not clear on it. Could you help us understand uh, what this is tied to or, or about? Also within that five minutes, um, and I did this, uh, I just contacted some folks on some websites and I said, 
I am passionate about learning about beekeeping. Uh, who are some of the folks, uh, I live in the Atlanta area, that would be good to connect with? And they gave me, uh, they gave me tons of contacts, but these were the five that seemed to be a good place to start. Beautiful bees, um, I think that speaks to a value. They value their bees. And the buzz fuzz, that speaks to some humor. Um, and sometimes people who really uh, appreciate humor can, can think differently. Uh, they can be more open to experiences that maybe they've not had before or to connecting with others. So sometimes those can be little clues that can let you know, I think this might be the kind of person we wanna meet with. Um, it, it might not work out that way, <laughs> but just know uh, any moment that you are thinking or researching or delving into something, uh, you can get little bits of information that you can kind of intuit to see if this might uh, be a part of who, who this person is or who this business is based on some of those more uh, marketing pieces. And then we selected five honey farms. Uh, and those are specific to individuals also in the Atlanta area. So you can imagine if I didn't limit it to Atlanta and I was just wanting to find the experts around the country, um, how much even more I would have on this list. But this was enough and very quickly um, found with the individual I'm working with. All right, the next step um, is for you uh, to talk a little bit about, um, and I'm sorry, my chat link is covering, okay, uh, support the individual to understand the various ways that we can connect with the individuals we're making a list of or the, the organized groups that we want to find out more and find out what they use currently because they've already got that skill and find out um, other means of connecting that, that might be more conducive to who, who the business is or who the individual is. Even asking them, as you'll see, you're gonna, you'll make a, a first step to introduce yourself and, um, and by you, I mean the individual you're working with um, and, and be able to uh, ask what's the best way to connect is it phone is it email is it um, a platform like we're using today and then prioritize with the individual you're supporting um, who you want to talk with first who you want to connect with first who you want to gather information from first and that's why we chose the bee association because it was this overarching um, system developed around beekeeping and we thought oh that would be a great place to to get some basic information also use YouTube um, many of the folks that we work with um, know now how to access a variety of information so even working with the individual before you begin to research just to learn more about what's involved in, bee in beekeeping and there are so many uh, brief tutorials and um, individuals who are talking about beekeeping on YouTube. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. <laughs> All right, step four, you're going to develop about five to eight questions and we're going to talk about those sh shortly um, so that you are organized and prepped. You'll, you'll show me talking um, later about um, practicing that's another thing that i just can't believe we don't do we don't practice the methodologies that we're using uh, individuals are trained and they're expected to go out in the real world and begin to implement this work and that's frightening um, think about folks you use someone who cuts your hair a, a medical or caregiver or um, someone who fixes your car those individuals practiced so I stress also, um, as you see that there are certain steps that you want to be prepared for before you get in the real life situation, find safe people, safe places uh, for the individual you're supporting and you uh, to practice some of the, the um, methods that we'll, we're going to dig into further. further. Um,
Uh, and that's exactly what I'm stressing. I've shared with y'all when I did this before, because I talk about it a lot. Um, I love this, these old Nike commercials with Spike Lee and Michael Jordan. And he's the character where he wears the baseball hat, <laughs> not in the right place. And um, he's full of questions and energy and kind of bouncing about. Michael Jordan is cool and calm and um, the, the character uh, ask him, is it, is it those socks you're wearing that make you so good? And he says, no. And they ask, is it those shorts you're wearing? <laughs> they make you so good. And so forth and so on till Michael finally says, it's none of that. It's practice, 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 practice. So please incorporate that. Um, that that's the only way to be fair to you and the individual you're supporting uh, when you get out in the real world. Um, so just know that uh, everything that you do that you've not done before, practice with others, get their feedback, videotape it, see how you look, what you might do better. And then make arrangements to talk to the identified individual. And it's always a plus if someone can vouch for you like when we were talking uh, with the Beekeeper Association, they said in the person's name specifically, um, he gave us permission to say that so-and-so told us to, to talk to you, that you're one of the folks uh, who he admires and knows that you would have the answers to the questions. So anytime you can say, so-and-so told me to get in touch with you, that's a good thing. And, and it's easy to make happen. Like I said, the person we spoke with, they don't know me or the other person, but they could tell we were passionate, we cared, we had done our research. And so uh, he was absolutely good um, for us to let, let the person know that he had recommended we talk to, uh, that he had recommended us. Then eight, always send a follow-up thank you note. That stands out because so many people forget to do that. Uh, so showing that we appreciate that you took the time and you provided us with really valuable information and we appreciate that. Uh, it's important. We don't do enough of this in, in our culture anyway. So uh, make sure you always send a follow up. Thank you. Note. So um, these are some of the questions that that are helpful. Um, they're just some questions that I, I uh, typed in quickly as I was thinking about this whole new way of connecting virtually and connecting on interest. So um, inter the, um, the individual, you need to help them craft an introductory statement, the reason why they're contacting uh, the, in the, focus in, uh, the focus person that you're calling or uh, Skyping or Zooming. Um, and explain that in addition to who the person is, that they have this interest, they want to learn more, they want to connect with others with the same interest, and they want to learn how to connect in those bigger ways, not just with an individual, but what are some of the groups that are meeting up. And always use the questions that we're going to go through and words that the individual wants to use as they are the ones that um, hopefully will be doing the interviewing. So simply, how do you become interested in this? So the, the individual you're, you're supporting is going to ask that question uh, after they've been introduced and kind of uh, explained a, a, a reason for contacting them. What opportunities are available to become involved with others with this interest? What are the goals of your group? And if it's a group you're connecting with, um, of course, it's an, if it's an individual and they, they're not a part of a group, you're not going to ask that. Um, does the person have any suggestions for how I can learn more about this interest uh, and get connected? And can you suggest anyone else I should contact for additional information. So what are some other questions? Um, if you will, and Sandra, I want to make sure that that we also bring up the question that you had um, 
So don't think I've forgotten about that because that, that was so important. Uh, she, Sandra, uh, as, uh, attended the first session and we were going to connect. And I said, well, it would be great if you could uh, bring that up when we meet for this gathering. Um, <laughs> and she has a good sense of humor. Um, so what other questions would you suggest? Just open your mic and throw them out or type them. And if we had longer, I would, I would really work with y'all um, to come up with your own questions because these aren't, okay. these are, oh yes. And if, um, if y'all didn't hear, a gentleman has spoken up, and I want to make sure he has enough time to ask his question. And did I understand that correctly? Is there a person out there wanting to ask a question? Or maybe typing in a question? Oh, excellent. Sandra has brought up, what have you found most surprising in your line of work? Excellent. Boy, that would open up a lot of good information. And also using open-ended questions as we talked before. So I love that one. In Fontella, do you offer additional resources and tools based on interest? What is the education requirement for you? Excellent, for your line of work. And so much of education is online now and so much of it is free. Um, so we're, we're gonna shift at this in a moment and I wanna remember that um as well during that time when we we discuss where this social capital building might lead to and what what was your path to beekeeping from dawn yeah those are fantastic questions um and some of those uh actually all of those are are better than the ones i put up there so what can be helpful is you, if you pull the team together with the job seeker, remember this work we do cannot be done in isolation. It requires a team and y'all can brainstorm together. What are some of the questions we need to ask? So thank y'all, those are excellent. What has been most rewarding and what are the challenges? Excellent, that's from Lisa. Sandra, try to find a commonality and offer something you might be able to provide so it's reciprocal. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love all of that. Thank you so much for sharing. So what if this interest is not just uh, an interest that the person wants to engage in when they're not working or when they're not attending some kind of structured support? Uh, system. Um, then what, what we want to do is take advantage of the moment to delve into it a little bit further if it becomes a vocational theme. And of course, we would go through discovery and do all of that work to fidelity. But while we have this person on hand, we also want to delve into that. Uh, and even if it doesn't uh, become a career path for the person, 
uh, it's just you having more information about working with small business owners or people who are uh, doing this kind of work that the person's interested in. So another great question is what in innovations are being made in whatever the, in my case, it would be in beekeeping. What resources are needed regarding this innovation? If someone was interested in this career path, um, what, and I'm sorry, the chat's over it again. What are some of the opportunities available in this particular field? And so many businesses, so many uh, individuals are thinking about, about business very differently. Um, so, so being a part of the solution for how our world of work changed so dramatically, so quickly, um, it's, it's wonderful to be able to have those conversations with small business owners. It lets you know they care. I always say you're the heart uh, of the community. If small businesses don't make it, the community doesn't make it. And I care about you and I care about the other business owners here. And that I work with individuals um, who value having a working life. So I really wanted to find out more about your business. How are you dealing with the stress? And what are some ideas you have uh, that maybe you hadn't thought of before? And, and what's needed to be able to make those, uh, those uh, thoughts or innovations a reality? That, that holds a key to the individual shifting into possibly a career path and knowing those opportunities and knowing what's, uh, what are the places in this particular uh, industry that would help you be able to solve problems and match well the individual you're supporting to the needs of the business and the culture of the business. And again, I stress over and over, please paraphrase or rephrase or uh, totally not use if the person doesn't want that question uh, in their list of questions, but make sure you're using the individual's word preferences, how they would want something said. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, Local labor market research is beneficial. And while discovering customized employment aren't part of the labor market uh, model or approach, uh, because many people benefit very uh, readily from a more traditional way to become in employed, uh, it can be interesting. You know, I wonder what the uh, the possible projections are for beekeepers in my case and uh, what does that look like and that can just be extra information as you're confirming vocational themes or you're confirming economic development in the particular industry in in the area where you work or in the area where the individual lives um, everything we do has to be grounded by values and uh, the ODEF competency model, which I shared with y'all, uh, I think it was during informational interviewing. I'm not sure if I shared it with you. Um, so many of the folks who have been doing this work for many, many years, uh, and one of the people on this call, yes, Roger, I'm gonna call you out, is one of my favorite people uh, who I met very early when I had no idea what I was doing. His name is Roger Shelley. He has written so much. He does this good work with such a fidelity and, and creativity. Um, so I wanted to let y'all know that, that he's on the call because it shows some social capital. Uh, I would do anything for Roger and I know he and his wife would, uh, if I needed them, would be there for me. Um, so that ties into those values that we're all one and, and we can benefit from whatever moment uh, we're with other people, we're connecting. So know that that's a gift as you're interacting with others. There might be something that would be important to stay connected with or where they may come back into your life. Uh, also, person-centeredness. This is not about a program. It's not about a system. It's about an individual. So everything has to be person-centered. Um, 
we've said this over and over individualized and interest based not something that we think the person might like to do but that you have tested out and this seems a, uh, to be a pretty solid interest also see if there are t tools that the person uses because they're going to already have some expertise there and teach you different additional it tools uh, including etiquette and safety because we are doing so much virtually and there are rules about how to um, to interact there are rules about etiquette and there's also safety uh, that has to be considered because not everybody who gets on the computer has uh, good intentions or um, is mindful about other people in a way to be helpful. Staff roles, that's us. So what we want to do is make sure that during this period that we are taking advantage of the opportunity to help the person become skilled in virtual resources. That's something that we're going to continue doing um, if, if the pandemic comes to a place where, where we go back a little bit to the way we used to do work. Uh, many people don't want that. There's become a humanism evolved, as I shared, um, humanistic evolution around you know, we want to bring more humanity, more caring into this work we do. Um, and I'm hearing it all the way from corporations uh, and CEOs of, of huge businesses to the small business owner. We also want to make sure we're utilizing social capital. That might be your social capital, it might be your CEO's social capital, it might be the board member's social capital, it might be co-workers, it might be friends, uh, might be the job seeker and their family or, or the folks that they're connected with. So if you're working and someone has an interest in health and beauty, find out, does anyone have any connection to anybody that is doing this kind of work? It could be spas, it could be places people get their fingernails done or haircut or um, massages, that kind of thing. So just start keeping that in your mind as, as the first step. Let's find out and inventory the social capital of those that we're working with, their families and ourselves, um, because that builds on options and people to talk to. And the more folks we are able to talk to, the more options we have, the more choices we have, the better our lives are. And then facilitate participation and bridge connections. And I'm going to move right now to this, this slide because this is how we formalize this thing that we've tended to not use in our life, uh, <laughs> which is uh, social capital as as part of the plans for individuals. Um, so to support people, you have to help the person learn how to make choices. Many times, either out of impatience because it may take um, longer for the individual to uh, make a choice or complete a, a task in the way they want to, we just do it. And that is so wrong. That's a moment of learning. And that's a moment where the person moves closer and closer to independence and self-determination. Help the person identify their skills, interests, and preferences. Create those opportunities, which is what this whole um, webinar is about, for the person to talk to, connect with, give to, and share with others. Incorporate building social capital into daily routines. If you're going out in the public, um, for whatever uh, around uh, places that are open and, and are safe, um, then you want that to be uh, something that happens regularly or virtually because that's how we build those relationships. Uh, help the individual continue to grow their network and their connections around interest. When folks are already connecting because they have an interest, then they are already many steps into that process because they're bonded by that interest. Think of the things you're interested in when you found others that love that interest. You know, there's a comfort there. There's a, a satisfaction, a, a joy that you 
are with people who kind of get you and, and these things that you enjoy in your life. And that's the same with individuals we get to work with. We just don't think about it in that way. And we've got to start. We also want to help the person find those virtual connections, uh, what's happening in the community around that interest. And the person has to be in a place of being able to connect with, with whomever it is that that's uh, the expert or the group of folks that have that similar interest over and over again. And it, like I said, it works well whether you're virtually connecting or um, actually able to get into a space because, because you can be safe there. And social capital develops over time. It starts with connecting with people, getting to know them, being with them over and over in some form or fashion. And then out of that familiarity, bonds of trust and support are built. And also in all you do, make sure you use best practices. I can get so put out uh, and I, I did this stuff um, and I'm so ashamed of it. Um, when we are working with individuals, let's do what we know works and keeping people segregated, keeping people in buildings, having people put together things uh, that may pay 25 cents a month. I've seen that. Um, and it was in the organization I was the CEO for and it just broke my heart. And I said, we're not doing this anymore. Um, and we shifted. We became community based because it's not by defining people in a way as other are different or special where people can have inclusive lives. It's by helping people be a part of the community where they live, uh, may work, hopefully work. Um, that's where the good stuff happens. Not when we shelter people away from other folks. So I, I was so good. There's so much more I wanted to share with you um, because when I get uh, around folks, I just want to give you all the information I learned, all the mistakes I made and learned from so you don't have to, or just to you know, make sure I'm uh, a benefit to you taking this hour out of your life. Um, so, as I was doing the um, preparation, I said, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to add that bit of information and jabber on and on um, and bring us to, you know, two minutes after the time before I finally shut up. Um, I, I factored in some time for us to have a discussion. So, please um, unmute your mic if you can or uh, put information into the chat box. And Sandra, please, uh, if you would, while folks are considering what they want to bring up, would you go ahead and bring up what you had uh, emailed me about? And ho I hope that you can unmute uh, just a sec. She is working on it. <coughs> Oh, her mic's having issues. I am so sorry, uh, Sandra. She's going to try another one. And um, um, someone asked if the PowerPoint will be available on the Griffin Hamas Association's website. Um, it's actual in intellectual property, but if there's specific information, say, for example, you wanted the questions just to, to get you started and uh, creating better questions than what I shared. I'm happy to send pieces of information. So if you can um, email uh, what, what specifically you're wanting, I'll be happy to send you that information. But there's tons of information on the internet around social capital. Uh, it's fun reading about. Um, and you're welcome, Fantella. Um, she's just thanking me. 
Any other questions, comments while we're waiting for um, Sandra? Can you hear me? I can. Okay, am I, so it's working? It is working. Your voice is coming across beautifully. Okay. Um, so I had reached out to Nancy because I was on the first social capital webinar. Um, and I, uh, I work in VR. I work for the California Department of Rehabilitation. However, my background is in social work. Um, I am a trained social worker and have very much used social capital in my work as a social worker. Um, but I've seen in VR that the RSA policies dictate a service delivery that um, kind of has preordained timeframes, which I think makes it hard for us in vocational rehabilitation to support our clients in developing their own social capital. Um, I, this last maybe nine months, I was assigned to uh, work with youth and I, because those um, timelines are not as preordained, it was the first time I actually felt comfortable helping my youth develop social capital and also me accessing my own personal social capital to, um, to connect both of those. Um, so I, my question was, you know, how do we balance the time constraints of a VR program when accessing our, our own social capitals as professionals and are helping our clients develop their social capital. And what I wanted to share with you and kind of get a little bit of a conversation going is that because connecting with others throughout the work day, throughout our, our uh, typical day or atypical day um, brings the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll share with you a great example. I was in the grocery store line and this older woman in front of me was so kind. She was being so sweet to this young man who was having a hard time. And I saw that value in, in uh, her value base uh, that she's coming from. And I hired her. I was uh, over a program that provided residential services, employment, day support, clinical team assessments, on and on. And it was segregated. Um, as I said. Um, and so being able to look out for those opportunities, uh, and it may be that you would act as a bridge if you, you can't do that good work because of the constraints you're under based on your job role, uh, you would be one of what those folks we call a, a connector or a bridger uh, between individuals and those who you are aware of uh, from your social capital um, and they can kind of take it from there. So that's why it's so important to inventory social capital, who knows who, who has a connection here. So if you're, you're working with someone who has a particular interest that doesn't fall under the guidelines that allow more time, then what would be helpful and what would be important would be to look at how you can bridge connections and make it very clear um, what that process is, what you're asking for, and how you think uh, two people connecting could enrich their lives. Well, thank you, Roger. And, and many people are, are um, saying, yes, they've had that problem. Um, so it may be that, that the roles that uh, we take, if we, can act, if we cannot actively be a part of that plan, like we went over, um, and hopefully each of you have a plan now to go back and work with a person you're supporting, uh, is to define ourselves as bridge, bridge builders between people uh, and connectors uh, between people who we know or someone we know knows <laughs> uh, could be a good fit uh, to start a conversation around interest or, um, again, there's so many ways that those relationships can form uh, to deal with uh, increasing a person's richness in life or um, to deal with issues where the person's kind of stuck. Um, 
um, decision making, problem solving, that kind of thing. So Sandra, I just I felt that question was excellent. I know many people have that issue. Is that is that somewhat helpful? <coughs> helpful? I think more of some of our roles because of the limitations in the task we're prescribed in our jobs um, to become more of a connector or bridge builder between people. Oh, thank you, Fontella. She felt it was helpful. And Sandra did too. Um, it's been over a month since we have been waiting to get to this point to have this conversation. And I am so sorry, um, we're two minutes over, but it has just been a joy to, to be with you. And um, my day's always better when I get to connect with folks. So you have a great holiday. Thank you, um, Miss, Miss Chambers, maybe. Uh, and oh, all these great names. E Kispa, that you're welcome. Um, so y'all take care, have a wonderful weekend and um, continue to fight the good fight for justice everywhere, social justice, civil rights everywhere, because the work we do is a part of that, that great movement. All right. Oh, thank you, Sandy. I sure will have a great weekend. All right. Take care.